apples are one of the most widely cultivated tree fruits, with around 75 million tonnes harvested each year. At supermarkets globally, consumers have a choice of many different apples, from older varieties such as Cox's Orange Pippin or Granny Smith, to more recent introductions such as Royal Gala. Plant and Food Research has been breeding apples for more than 40 years, and the breeding program based in Hawke's Bay is targeting new varieties that both appeal to consumers and provide benefits for growers, as breeder Richard Vols explains. The key aims of the apple breeding program are focused around consumer traits of the apple. Essentially it's the fruit quality traits that the consumer um, would appreciate in the, in the fruit. So specifically we're talking about fruit textures. We want a crisp and juicy texture. It's maintained as long as possible in storage, cold storage and during shelf life. But in addition to that we have some new breeding aims. They focus on novel characters, uh, particularly around novel flavours novel skin colours and flesh colours. So they are our consumer traits. As well we have a focus around production traits and specifically resistance to some important diseases that we have in our commercial production areas. Um, black spot and powdery mildew are two of those. What makes the plant and food research breeding program so unique is the fact, well first of all it's been going for quite a long time. In the 1960s uh, we selected Gala, which is an important apple uh, around the world today, and basically the uh, campus here has been breeding apples ever since. In the 1990s we had the Pacific Series, Pacific Rose, Pacific Beauty and Pacific Queen, and these were followed by Jazz and Envy, and in more recent times, in the last decade or so, we've had Lemonade, a Smitten, Sweetie and the Small Fruited rocket apple. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is that we have um, a very large germplasm base for our breeding program. That germplasm material has been collected from all over the world, old varieties, uh, wild apples from Kazakhstan. So that forms the base, if you like, of the apple breeding program from where we can discover and develop new traits and produce new traits into our new cultivars. Apples bred by the plant and food research team are taken to growers and ultimately to consumers through the commercialisation company Preva, a joint venture between plant and food research, Apple and Pear Australia and Pipfruit New Zealand. And Preva was set up to globally commercialise all the new apple and pear varieties emanating from uh, plant and food's world renowned apple and pear breeding program which has a heritage going back 40 years. So we've been uh, operating to deliver competitive advantage for the New Zealand and Australian apple and pear industries, offering them first mover, uh, early access to cultivars, and we also license the right to grow, market and sell these new cultivars in the Northern Hemisphere in a complementary way to the interests of the New Zealand and the Australian industries. And by complementary I mean we want to create market demand for uh, markets that New Zealand traditionally exports to, we also want to create critical mass for the supermarket and create that awareness of the branded products. But what I think sets the plant and food breeding program apart is that it is integrated. So within the program we have not only a unique access to a unique germplasm, and we've got some top clever scientists uh, doing the, the breeding work itself, but we also have the related disciplines, the genomics, uh, the consumer science, uh, the work out in the orchard, the productivity and the, and the agronomic side of breeding, it all comes together. So we have the underpinning science working very closely with the actual commercial breeding to deliver a superior product. I think too, uh, what else sets it apart is the close working relationship with industry. The fact that plant and food are listening to the, the breeding needs, the future products, not only of consumers, but also of the marketplace and also uh, those that actually grow the products. When we are considering or moving to a new variety, I dare say the factors that we take into account is the market opportunities, where's it going to go and how much is that market going to pay for it because we are running a business and therefore we're trying to make money out of every apple that we grow. We also consider where it fits into the harvest period and how it fits in with the other varieties that we have and we also then consider how difficult or easy is that variety to grow? I mean, is it susceptible to russet or other, you know, sunburn or pest and diseases? And just what kind of management practices that we need to employ so that we can get the, you know, the best product, you know, off the orchard. New varieties are important, particularly for market access, for the new markets that are, are opening up. 
I mean, Asia in particular, as everyone will be aware, has been coming, uh, opening their doors for more trade. Uh, they have a different taste profile. So therefore, if growers want to capitalise on that, um, they need to convert some of the older varieties into the newer ones that are more suitable for that market. The Plant and Food Research Apple Breeding Program combines an established history of successful cultivar development with knowledge of the global industry. New cultivars not only appeal to the consumer with good taste, texture and novelty characteristics, but also offer growers the chance to gain a premium in target markets.